In this video, we're going to talk about variance and standard deviation. The variance or the standard deviation are basically a way to talk about how spread out a data set is, how spread out are the numbers within that data set. And the formula looks more complicated than it actually is. It looks like a mess where it's there's a sigma here, there's this here, there's this xi and this x bar. But let's just talk through what it means and the logic behind why it makes sense uh, what this is. So essentially, notice that in order to find the variance with the standard deviation, you must first know the mean of that data set. So let's do an example and talk through this. So let's say that uh, you want to find the variance of this data over here, these uh, these five numbers, one, two, three, four, and five. So the X bar, meaning the average of this sample is, well, add these up and divide it by five. If you add them up, you'll get 15. So 15 divided by five is three. So we know that. And so here's what the concept of variance or standard deviation is doing. It's asking us how spread out are each of these numbers, you know, compared to their average. Because if I were to just, uh, a little thought experiment, if I were to just, you know, new day, new question, say that, you know, suppose everyone has a value of 10 versus here, somebody has zero versus 10 versus 20, right? The average of both of these groups is 10, right? So these three average out to 10. These three add up to 30 divided by three is 10. But so the average alone doesn't really tell you about how spread out the numbers are relative to each other, right? So here, these aren't spread out at all. So we'd want to say that they have low variance. These are really spread out. Uh, so we'd want to say that they have more variance than this group, right? Even though they have the same average. So that's why X bar is usually not enough for us to, to describe everything important about a data set. So we have the X bar. And so our logic is this. If we were the first people coming up with this, we'd want to say, how far are each of these numbers from the average? And that's where this term in the formula comes from. It's xi, meaning each one at a time, minus the average, and that will give you the distance, right? How far off it is. Now we square it just because if the distance is negative versus positive, we still want to count it as like an absolute, like how far off it is. And squaring it will basically guarantee that it's a positive number. So at least it makes the units more, you know, better for us to do. And so let's just apply this out. So here, this is going to be xi, meaning x1, right? 1 minus the average of 3. So 1 minus 3 squared. All right. Plus, because that's what the summation notation is. This, by the way, it should be like i is 1 through n, right? But usually, in stats, it's always i is 1 through n. So often people will just write the, the sigma, but they actually mean sigma as i goes from 1 through n which really just means x i, meaning x1, x2, x3, till however many points you have in your sample. So here, this is x1 minus the average, then x2, like the next data point, which is 2, minus the average. Then, So really, we're basically taking each data point, seeing how far off it is from the average, and squaring it just to guarantee that that number is positive. All right, and then, Divide in a way we're sort of looking at the average, right? On average, how far off this is. So we're adding them up and dividing about how many there are. And so we divide it by n if we're looking at a population, but more commonly we're looking at a sample. And so that's why the denominator is n minus one. Don't worry too much about why. So here the sample size, the n is five. And so five minus one, the denominator is going to be four. So, but really it's roughly speaking, the average of these distances, right? The average of the difference. Uh, from the mean. All right, so let's uh, let's do this out then. Uh, that's just going to be three minus one is negative two, and negative two squared is still positive four. Two minus three is negative one. Negative one squared is positive one. Three minus three is zero. Four minus three is one. One squared is one. And finally, five minus three is two. Two squared is four. So we have all these divided by 4, and so finally uh, these add up to 10. 10 divided by 4 is 2.5. So 2.5, we'd say, is the variance of this. Now, how do we interpret that? What is the meaning of 2.5, right? And actually, there really is no practical interpretation because of this squaring. 
the squaring makes the units all messed up. If this was income measured in dollars and you're trying to look at how spread out are people's incomes relative to the average income and it's measured in dollars, the units of variance would be dollars squared, which really has no practical meaning, right? It's $2.5 squared, right? Uh, so usually it doesn't really have a practical interpretation. So instead, what we do is we sort of invented this concept called standard deviation, which is literally just the square root of the variance. So standard deviation is the same formula we had for variance, but a little square, a big square root on it, just so that way it's sort of like undoing the fact that we squared the units, but while still making sure that we square it to guarantee that they're positive numbers in the end, right? So in the end, the, sta the variance or the standard deviation, they have to be positive numbers. If you do the math, if you get a negative number for your variance, you made a math mistake somewhere. There's literally nowhere you could have gotten a positive because any of these new things in the numerator would have had to be positive after squaring it. You know, and so then so adding a bunch of positives is still positive. Dividing it by the positive is still positive. So so the standard deviation for so if I were to look at the same thing and say, hey, find the standard deviation of this data set, you'd first essentially find the variance and then take a big square root. So you'd say the standard deviation. Which, by the way, the notation for standard deviation is either S, if it's a sample, or it's si the lowercase sigma. It's like a little O with a, a horizontal thing on top, so it's like this sigma. Uh, so that's the notation for standard deviation. And so that, in this case, would just be root 2.5. So whatever that is, roughly 1.6-ish, I'm just rounding. So 1.6 is the... Uh, standard deviation. And that actually, unlike variance, has a nice interpretation because that literally is the average distance from the mean. So if these were incomes, if you like, somebody has an income of one, two, three, four, and five, and the average income is three, the interpretation is that the average person is $1.6 away from the average of $3, right? So whatever it is, that's how you interpret standard deviation. It's the average distance from the mean. Let's do this example. What if uh, this data set was literally just 10, 10, and 10, and it said find the standard deviation or variance, right? Well, again, plugging this in to our formula, that's just going to be, first of all, what's the average? Add these up, you get 30 divided by 3 is 10, which kind of makes sense. So you, using this formula, you get the first guy minus the average, so 10 minus 10 squared, plus the second guy, also 10 minus 10 squared, and the third guy is also 10 minus 10 squared divided by n minus one, so three minus one, that's two. Huh, this is zero squared plus zero squared plus zero squared, so essentially zero plus zero plus zero, which is zero. Dividing it by two is still zero, and the square root of zero is still zero. So this is literally a standard deviation of zero, which means the interpretation is, on average, each person is zero away from the mean, which makes sense, because everybody's literally at the mean, right? There's nobody, there's no, deviation, and so the standard deviation is zero, right? Now, finally, let's talk about this concept called the z-value, or the z-score. And so in English, the z is essentially how many of those sigmas you are away from the mean, right? So z is literally the number of standard deviations, SDs, away from the mean you are. So this notation mu means mean for the population. And again, as I said, this notation sigma means uh, standard deviation. So this formula is saying your value minus the mean. So how far off are you from the average? Uh, and then dividing it by each standard deviation will give you, again, the number of standard deviations. So let, let's do an example to make this really drive this point home. So let's say, and this is a question, suppose the average income is 50 grand and the standard deviation of income is five grand. And the question is, if you, your income is 65,000, then what is your z-score? What is the z-score of that income? And so what we're trying to get at is again, it's like if this is like a number line and 50,000 is the average, and you're at 65,000, we're trying to standardize it. We're trying to say how many of these sigmas, these $5,000 like units fits in between these, right? And well, five, five, and five, right? There's 15,000 between them. So there's three of these sigmas away. And so it should be three. 
But again, if you couldn't do that math in your head, you could just use this formula. Objectively, it's like saying, all right, we're at 65 grand minus the, the average is 50 grand. So that numerator is the distance, the distance from the mean, which is 15,000. If you're 15,000 away and each sigma is five grand, then 15 divided by five, right? 15,000 divided by 5,000 is three. So this is three. So your z-score is three. Your three sigma is above the mean. So notice that unlike standard deviation, z itself could be positive or negative based on whether you're above or below the mean. Because if you're below the mean, then your value minus the average is going to be negative. So let's take a look at this other example. So suppose same question with your income being 45. Well, now 45,000 minus the average of 50 grand, that's negative 5,000, right? On the numerator, divided by 5,000. Negative 5,000 divided by 5,000 is negative 1 which means your z is negative one, which means you're one sigma below the mean, which kind of makes sense, right? If this is at 50 grand and you're at 45, right? You're exactly one below the mean, one 5,000 sigma, you know, below the mean. And finally, you can also take this in the other direction. What if I gave you these facts, right? That the average is 50 grand, and the uh, sigma is five grand. And then I said, if, you're, if I give you your z, your z is one and a half, then what is your income? You can figure that out too. First of all, is the z positive or negative? Well, it's positive, which means you're above the mean. And then as far as how much above the mean are you? Well, each sigma is five grand and you're one and a half of those, right? So it's really like the average is 50,000 plus I'm 1.5 of those sigmas above the mean and each sigma is five grand. So, you know, one and a half of these would be 7,500. And so if you're $7,500 above the mean, your income is 50 grand plus that, so 57,500. So that is how you can use Z-score.